Today we're gonna to inlay some banding into a tabletop. We're gonna show you how we do it. Our banding was made with half inch pieces of maple and paduke, and then I added a layer of veneer top and bottom, which resulted in 13 millimeters in total width. My half inch router bit wasn't gonna be wide enough to cut my dado, so I ordered a 13 millimeter router bit and I had to order a collar to fit into my collet to make it work in my router. We have one oak tabletop and then we're going to inlay this banding approximately three and three quarters, four inches inlay perimeter around the edge of the table. So we've cut this. It's about three eighths an inch thick. We're going to inset it a quarter inch or two eighths and then we'll just have one eighth of an inch, if that, to smooth off the top with hand planes and sanding. So we have a particular pattern of what we're doing and we're gonna have our pattern where the two dark pieces here will meet and in the corner, we're gonna put a nice piece of yellow heart to match our inlay banding that we have on the sides, aprons of this table. The key is what we're trying to accomplish is to have these two dark pieces meet at the corner and then we'll put a piece of our yellow heart in right there to offset that. Those will be hand cut to go in the corners of each of the four corners on this piece. And the trick is to be able to have these pieces match up from light to dark all the way down the table to where you can have that meet at the other end down here with the same scenario. We'll cut out the white piece and inset the yellow heart in that location there. And so the trick is to be able to stop at the right spot here, replicate it on each of the four corners that one, and then back over here. Okay, to lay these out, the first thing we did was number our pieces. And yes, that's a permanent marker on there. Remember the top part of that's gonna be shaved off, so after we get it inlaid, it won't matter. So we have all our pieces numbered, one through 12, so we know the order in which they will go in. Now the trick is to lay out our lines of where we're gonna cut with our router bit. Now, when you're making a cut on a table, quarter inch deep, you get one try at it. So I went extremely slow. Matter of fact, this portion of the video is sped up four times. The actual length of the time it took me to cut this was three minutes. And so I'm going one pass all the way down to make sure I get it exactly perfect the first time. I had one little glitch. There's always that situation where that happens. So I'll show you exactly what I did when I got to that glitch. Right here, I'm pointing out where I had a little tiny variation that the router guide came off the back side of the table about a sixteenth of an inch. I could tell it when I was pushing it and pushed it back in and so I decided I needed to get another smoother cut on that same spot to make sure that that would be a smooth transition. So after I get my dado cut, I fit my pieces in for a little dry fit. I put them in each nicely, press them down to make sure they'll fit. And you'll see this last piece, there's a little bit of an issue on, so let's figure it out what to do. This one can fit it. This one is a, this is where I had a little crookedness on the cut. Can you, I can feel it right there. I'm gonna have to put it back in there, cut that again. I put the router back in the slot. I turned it on 
and recut the groove going over the same area, making sure the router guide was held flush to the table. Worked out fine. Okay, here we go. Second time around for a dry fit. Three pieces in, and here comes a fourth. More better. Yeah. Here we are, 20 minutes later, cutting the other side of it. So this will make three sides of it done, only needing to get the final section done to match up at the other end. That's the most complicated part. Now we're on to the last section to cut. So we measured and marked and marked and measured to make sure we had it precise because we didn't get a second chance to cut this. Hey, we learned to hook up the dust collection to the router. It might help too. Here's a couple of shots of the inlay laying in there without our corner pieces. We'll be cutting those here shortly. So we have our inlay set in and we have just a tiny bit of area yet to cut off. We have our placeholder blocks of yellow heart in the corner. We'll actually come back and custom fit these to size. But there we go, we got all the inlay resting in here. And after we get our corner blocks done, then we'll glue it in. So six and seven will meet here in the corner. And I need a piece that will fit that exactly. So that's what I'm going to be measuring for. Or maybe I should start at one and go from there. So here I am starting at the first number one block and I get it all squared up and sand the piece to size. This is how I cut small pieces to size. I use a pencil with a rubber eraser to hold my piece down to keep my fingers away from the blade. So when doing the small detail work, like putting this half inch square block into the corner, it's a matter of squaring it up to making sure it's got a nice tight fit. You sometimes have to come back and win the small chisel and make sure your receptacle hole is nice and square so it all fit nice together. So the trick comes when you're putting your corner pieces in. They have to be cut for the total width of that and length of that. And so if that one's flush, and you come down to the other end, and you can get this one flush, and that's pretty good in here. So this has to be pushed in this way. From that end down there, and what we are doing down here, will have a little bit more of a rectangle than a square. So the options are is to make this a little bit more longer to make this rectangle or we cut a little bit of piece with a little more of our paduke on this side here to cover that gap because when we move this piece down here like that so that fits square in there then we'll have this issue up here so that looks almost square. So the other option is to make this square and then come in here and where I moved this one to the left to take up that gap is to cut out this section right here and to put that little spe uh, spacer in there to make sure this thing will be flush so our corner piece is square. So I've cut the first part of this off on this side over here. Now the trick is to cut it right to the left side of that little line. And I'm going to save that little bitty piece right there. Okay, so it took three pieces or three tries to get this piece to fit exactly to where this is square to the corner. Okay, so I got all my yellow heart corner pieces in place, nice and tight. So that's the only one I can pull out without pressure. That one's tight. That one's tight. I can barely pull that one out. And it was all in advantage of this little spacer that I put in right there. 
Now onto the glue up. So we put our tight bond three in here because it's a lighter colored glue and gives us a more longer open time. And we put uh, 20 clamps, 10 calls to get this whole thing nice and glued up. We clamped everything down, then we came back and one by one took off each one, cleaned up the glue, and reclamped it. All right, let's see how we did. It's glued in. Our little seam is right there. We have a little tiny gap of glue covering that. Here's our one issue we have is that this ended up being a little bit too long. I suspect that our pieces swell up a little bit when they hit the glue for a period of time and we didn't get it compressed that way enough. So we'll trim this piece before we make this final cut for our final corner. So while the next step is to take the hand plane and to plane all these down flush with the tabletop, this is side grain and I want to be careful on that. So I'm gonna flush cut the corners and then we'll hand plane the next. So let's get this started here. All right, let's try a couple of passes here and see how this works. So now I'm fitting the last corner piece into the block. I had to pare off a little bit of the paduke from the other end, which was a little bit long, and I custom cut that hole and sized my square. So here's my corner block, and that pencil line is what I have to cut off. I find having it these sort of clamps to hold it with small pieces is the best way to go. And I've done a little hand planing to take down the sides of that. And of course it does make for interesting shavings. That's kind of what they look like. But it's hard to get a full complete cut because it's all ingrained. So it takes a fair amount of work. And so I've done this one side here and this side over here. And then I've got it down to a reasonable amount and I sanded this. So I've got the corner flat and flush with the tabletop and got this over here and that took about oh five to eight minutes to do that so once we plane it down a fair bit then we can come back with a probably a card scraper and a sander and get it flush with the top i found the card scraper was probably the most efficient and proficient tool to getting the banding flush with the top and scrape the top at the same time work extremely well. Again, sharpen your scraper, make all the difference in the world. There we have it. Inlay banding on a oak tabletop, two feet by four feet. So we went ahead and did a hand plane on the banding, get it down as close as we could. Then we got the card scraper on it and scraped it down as far as we could. And then we descended it with 80 grit. Now we'll go back and have some very minor uh, glue lines that need filled. And then we'll do one final sanding with 120. So with that, our inlay banding is done. So if you liked our video on how to do inlay banding, give us a thumbs up. If you wanna see more of our projects, consider subscribing down below. And as usual, come back and see me real soon.